Hello, everyone. Welcome to the season number three, episode number 17. This is Agile Wisdom Podcast. I'm the Russian Madam Pitiki, an Agile coach from the beautiful island, Sri Lanka. Today, I have a very special guest with me to talk about something that's going to change your management again. In this episode, we are going to talk about OKRs, lean OKRs. Goal setting is one of the most replicated and influential paradigms in the management context. The trick is that if you do not pay the right attention on goal setting, it can backfire and become the most wasteful activity than being anything useful. So today, let us help you to clear all your doubts about goal setting, to get goal setting to the next level, helping your team and your organization to go from good to great. For that, let me invite my colleague, Bart, on the show. Hey, Bart. Hey, Nero. Thanks for having me. How are you? I'm doing great. It's my absolute pleasure and privilege to have you uh, on the show, Bart. Thank you for welcoming the uh, invite and, you know, spending your personal time with, with us. Not a problem. Happy to be here and have a good talk with you. Let me, let me start the talk uh, with a quite uh, interesting topic. That is your book, right? And I, I see a lot of interesting insights coming from you, particularly talking about the book that you are writing. Is it is it done or still in the the final state stages? Well, it is done, and hopefully the book is going to print this week. So I'm really excited about that. Oh, nice! Love to hear. Definitely, I, I'm I'm gonna have a copy of it. Yeah. So once it's ready, <laughs> so yeah, you looking sure? forward to read it. <laughs> Looking forward to read it. Yeah. Uh, the, the first question is around that, uh, but uh, the question is, uh, so tell us, tell us something about your book. What is it? Yeah. So the book is it title, about, yeah. So the book title is moving the needle with lean OKRs. And I, I start writing the, I was start writing the book two years ago and it was a little bit out of, um, frustration. I would say, but also a lot of questions that, mm -hmm. that I got from, from, from leaders all around the world, um, clients saying like, okay, we know about OKRs, we've read the books, um, um, especially uh, Measure What Matters. It's, it's, it's a great book. There are great examples in it. Um, and, and, and of course, there's also uh, Christine Wotsky's um, Radical Focus. And a lot of people read these yeah. books and they, they miss kind of the, the hands-on um, guide basically to to start using them in their organization, and and next to that I saw like a lot of organizations starting out with OKRs, and they they didn't work for their organization. So I discovered uh, some patterns and I tried to harvest these patterns and I put them uh, in the book, and I call them explicitly lean OKRs because I think in most in many organizations they try to tick a box with with OKRs. Uh, basically converting all their existing goals into OKRs and they, they tick the box and say like, now we're using OKRs. But that's not true. So with lean OKRs, I try to put the emphasis on on reducing the amount of goals. And actually, I, I um, like to use like a single OKR for, for the whole organization and for every team to really focus on, on, on what is really important for the organization. So with the book, I try to make an attempt on getting OKRs back on track um mm. for many organizations that are now using them uh there are there are a lot of problems around goal setting right most of the organizations are suffering due to a lot of issues right uh, not sure you you came across this particular paper research paper done by harvard business school in 1990 uh john dewar in his book uh, uh, measure what matters he mentioned this and the article talks about Goals gone wild, 
<laughs> it it talks <laughs> about quite a few quite a few uh, malpractices that can lead to really frustrating uh, situations unproductive uh, teams demotivation and all that all that problems right all those problems right and in that in that particular report they put a hb as a harvard business schools put a uh, warning right saying this so I, i would like to read this warning it's quite interesting and it's quite in line with what you just said right so the warning says goals may cause systematic problems in organizations due to narrowed focus on ethical behaviors increased risk taking decrease cooperation and decrease intrinsic motivation use care when applying goals in your organization right yeah so that's this, very true. this was quite yeah. interesting <laughs> quite interesting for me when i when i saw it and yeah so <laughs> i think you are you are trying to nail on that perspective right because just okr itself might not optimize anything if you are not if you are not trying to optimize the whole right so i think lean talks about optimizing the whole system than just making suboptimal efforts towards improvements exactly and that's the whole the whole lean thinking concept is 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 behind okrs and explicitly called lean thinking because a lot of lean concepts um can be can be Uh, reflected back on OKRs and, uh, and Lean is one of my favorite uh, management techniques. Um, and unfortunately, I see many organizations that they should pay, I think, more attention to to this label that you just mentioned. Like you know, um, be careful, <laughs> caution when using OKRs yeah. because it's basically it is uh, agile stereotypes, right? So hmm. if if you have a lot of organ if you have a lot of teams and they still struggle with, for example, basic Scrum, you have a problem. You need to mm. fix that first, right? If you don't have excellent delivery skills, how <laughs> do you think that you can move on to the mm. next level, which is OKRs? OKRs is really like a progression of, 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 of agile thinking um, because it, it, in, it involves the whole organization. Yeah. And it starts with respect for people first. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. 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 It's, it's pretty much uh, uh, in line with agile thinking. And as you said, you know, it's... It, you know think okr as the next step right so if you haven't fixed the basics fundamental problems i i think you are not ready to think any scaling a scaling frameworks yeah in the, in your terms what are okrs so okrs are a goal setting system for sure that's obvious right and hmm. it is also sometimes people call it a, a critical thinking framework right uh because mm. it it requires that people think critically about their goals and their strategy etc but, but i think above all it is a, a a mechanism to provide organizational wide learning so um not on a local level but on an on a global scale in in the company the whole company as a whole should learn continuously uh to making big steps towards um uh, towards uh uh very challenging goals so in okrs in a nutshell it's you have to, you have an objective that's the thing that you want the, the thing that you would like to achieve that's the what and then you have the key results and th those are measurable outcomes uh towards this objective and um and there's a third component by the way which a lot of people mm. forget when they're using okrs Mis yeah yeah and 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 that that third component is basically the okr cycle So hmm. without the OKR cycle, uh, there are many uh, forms and shapes of this OKR cycle, but without the OKR cycle in place, OKRs are uh, useless, right? So you need to have all three components. So you need to have the objectives, the key results, and then you need to provide um, a regular rhythm uh, cycle for OKRs. Cadences. Yeah. yeah, you need to have the cadence in place. Uh, without that, um, you need to have a system in place to achieve your goals. Um, yeah, so that's really important. So I will always say like OKRs have three components. So objectives, key results, and the cycle. What you said is right. Yeah. So if you, what you're saying is, if you just have OKRs, right, where you have the objectives, talking about what to do, and then key results. These are the milestones or the outcomes that you're trying to achieve by going in the direction that you have set in the objective. Uh, but if you miss out, if you overlook on the cycle, that won't mean anything. It's simply, you know, these these things will be there somewhere written, and no one looks at it. 
right? I think the OKR cycle is what enables the organization to go back and, you know, uh, plan, replan, execute, review, you know, basically put the PDCA cycle into play. Is that yeah, right? which brings us back to lean again, right? So, yeah. so this whole lean concept of plan, do, check, act, or, you know, there's uh, vari variations on top of that cycle. But in essence, you have that loop on a higher level, um, on, an, on an quarterly level by default, but also um, in a small when you're going to run experimentations towards your key results. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So this leads to the next question, which is mostly uh, a confusion in the, the community, particularly those who don't know chaos might think they, mm. they almost conclude that this is just objectives also, right? Because they won't, they won't understand the key difference between the traditional goal setting me uh, methodologies or the frameworks and objectives and key results. So can you, can you help us to understand what are the key differences between objectives and key results and the traditional goal setting methodologies and frameworks? Yeah. So the objective is a qualitative description of what you want to achieve. So there's no number. And the, hmm. the idea with an objective is to inspire people, right? To, to say like, hmm. oh, this is, the, this is 90 days from now. This is where we want to be uh, with our team or with our organization. So that provides focus. And then the key results, that's actually where the numbers come in. That's actually where you have the outcomes that will measure hmm. progress towards the objective and will 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 provide evidence basically that you have uh, achieved the objective. So, um, and then the difficulty with that, of course, is that um, you need to be concrete enough in the objective hmm. that it makes sense. So that's not you know really fake and that nobody understands it. But yeah. it also needs at the same time it needs to be inspirational and 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 it, and it is almost an art to get this right. So you need to be you need to inspire people, but at the same time not to be fake. So um, and, and this is where a lot of uh, teams struggle, but I think it's really important because when you compare it maybe to transition, the traditional goal setting methodologies, uh, for example, when you have smart goals, uh, smart hmm. um, only focusing on the metrics. And I think it's really important to have also the objective added to that because it will give a little bit more soul to, to the objectives or to, the, to, to your goal setting, right? Because not a lot of people have something with numbers and having an objective a written statement of what you want to de describe um, gives a little bit more back to soul to goal setting. Um, and in addition, there's even some people that try to uh, create an image uh, that hmm. represent the goal, right? So um, hmm. when you compare to traditional goal setting methodologies, um, you have the objective and you have the key results, whereas in other goal setting methodologies, you maybe only have the objective or you have only the key results or only the metrics. Um, with some targets on it. So, and I think OKRs combines the two, which I think is make, make it really, um, um, makes it really uh, simple to use um, and easy to use. Uh, um, hmm. And I think that, that is, if you compare it to other methods, I think uh, OKRs and the popularity because of uh, popularity of OKRs is due to the fact that it is simple, not simplistic, <laughs> but simple to use. I agree. I agree. And and I think, you know, you, you, you kind of brought a very, very clear perspective into that. Generally, even in Andy Groove's definition, what is AC is objective is giving you a direction. Key results is what exactly you are going to output, right? Those are the outcomes, milestones that you're trying to achieve. Uh, I, I think, you know, the in the direction itself, we, it is, it is, meant that we need to talk about the why perspective, but we might overlook it, right? I think the, 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 the perspective you brought up is really important. So what you're saying is question why, is that correct? But in the objective yeah, what, itself, ask why, why? Yeah, you can use why to, to, to come up with the right objectives. Um, however, you need to be careful with that because you can say like, um, uh, what you can you can continue to repeat the why question. However, then probably you end up you know uh, with uh, mm. finding real uh, with defining real peace, right? <laughs> so um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or peace of mind, or so you need to you need to be careful at at which abstraction level you you will sit, right? With with teams, so because mm. you can say like, well, we want to improve uh, customer lifetime value, 
Um, why is that? Well, we want to uh, uh, help more customers. And why is that? Well, we want to have world peace, right? So it's really difficult. You need to define the right abstraction level. And that's why so many teams struggle with implementing OKRs because you also don't want to sit at, at you also don't want to define outputs and, and milestones hmm. um, because you, yeah. you should always try to define outcomes. But sometimes these mm. outcomes are too too abstract to influence with a team or with a company, and then you need to go mm. drill one level deep. and And that's why it's so important to uh, provide this organizational learning in organizations because one quarter you maybe have an OKR that was too abstract. Now you go one level deeper, it may be too directional, too directive, and now uh, the next quarter you nailed it and you're in in between. And you, and then then when you get it and you put a lot of hmm. emphasis and focus on that, then probably magic will happen. But it's really difficult to find it and to define it. It's almost like an art to find what's the right abstraction level for your team to focus on. Hmm. Um, and true, and true. what is also important is that it needs to tie into tie, tie back into your strategy. Like what 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 is it that that you want to achieve? Uh, what are the things that you're not going to do in a, in a, in a, in a coming quarter or in the next year? And, and then uh, your strategy should inform your OKRs. That makes it also easier. True, true. Very true. But yeah, so I mean, thank you for the kind of critical, critical look at it. Because uh, although it sounds really, really simple to say, hey, hey, this is my direction. This is why I have to do it. Uh, what you're saying is it, it's not that easy, right? Because we, 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 we try to define that at, at, at abstract level where things are things might not be so clear right so i think you know in that report that's exactly what they talk about right either it can be too too vague uh, or it could be too specific so they, they do this research uh, they basically uh, pick group of people and uh, ask them to watch a, a video the video is uh, basically a video where people play uh, basketball right uh, they basically pass the ball uh, from one to another Right, they keep passing the ball. So there are two groups: uh, guys wearing black t-shirt, guys wearing white t-shirt. So the goal given is watch the passes done by the the guys wearing black t-shirt. So what happens is the group start focusing too specifically about that goal. They misses an obvious object coming into the the ground coming onto the ground and then going going back so it was a black you know guy wearing a black uh, gorilla t-shirt right mm -hmm. wearing a hat black color hat and they, the the audience totally missed that because the goal given to them was wash passes done by the guys wearing the black t-shirt right they just yep. focus on that and they because that makes sense right based on the goal because the goal was wash that Right, everything else will be missed. So similarly, there can be a lot of problems around the goal setting and the goals that we are trying to chase. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, so yeah, so you, so it can be really powerful OKRs, and that's why you need to pay attention. So, but you need to hmm. try to focus not on outcomes. And um, also, Google changes its model after 2011, while before uh, Andy Grove and and others they said like it's fine to have like output focused goals but actually we're interested in the outcomes what are our users doing with the features that we build for example what are you doing with yeah. it um and if you can if you then give an an, an hard problem or an outcome basically to a team uh, or you collaborate with a team on on you know defining an outcome um mm. then then magic will happen so yeah, so you shouldn't focus. You should never focus on completing task or you know focusing only on the on the people in the in the in the in the black t-shirts. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Then you get maybe local optimization and stuff. Yeah. How we should tackle crafting an organizational vision. So that's that's a that's a good question. Um, I think I think it makes it really helps a company to have defined strategy on paper and to communicate it uh, with mm. everybody in in the in the organization and um, I think it starts all with it starts with it starts all with a mission like what's the reason why the company exists in the first place and then um, and and that's probably a goal that you never will achieve in your lifetime right so um, but a vision is, is I think it's a statement where you want to be maybe five years from now, 10 years from now, 
Um, and it makes a lot of sense to put um, to put a metric uh, on on that vision. Like sometimes they call it a, a big, hairy, audacious goal. Um, but the problem with that goal, I think, is that it's not measurable, right? Uh, or sometimes not measurable. So what what other organizations try to do sometimes is to put what is called an ultimate OKR um, as as your vision, uh, as your vision statement almost. And so and that that really helps, you know. Okay, this is the dot on the horizon. That's the direction that we want to go for the next five to ten years. And if you have defined that. Um, Maybe you need to put more words to that uh, and maybe uh, put something on paper, um, not, not not like a 10, 20 page uh, vision document, but maybe just a one page document or maybe even an, uh, a canvas or a lean canvas, right? So it can help there to define your vision. Um, but then you need to come up with a plan. Like um, how are you going to get a little bit closer to that longer term vision? And that is what is called often a strategy, right? So how do we go a little bit closer to that? And um, and that 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 and then and then the strategy is you know these are the things that we're not going to do. We we are very focused on the thing that we would do, and there's a, of course there are many strategies possible in a company. You can have the corporate strategy itself, like the the overall company direction. Um, uh, but when you're talking about OKRs, especially in, in, in software development teams. Uh, in Agile teams, you're talking about executing on a product strategy, which is um, a subset of that longer term vision. Like this is the vision that we have with the with the product. How are we going to get closer to that to that longer term vision with the with the product organization, and then try to set a couple of OKRs um, that are informed by your strategy. Yeah? So um, saying you want to. Um, um, Increase customer lifetime. That could be a long, longer term goal, right? But that, what does it mean for us? What does it mean for next quarter? So you could say, well, this quarter, we are going to focus on customer lifetime, increasing customer lifetime value only for the European market or for the Asian market. And you can even be more specific than that. We're only going to focus on the customer lifetime value of small customers or SME customers in, I don't know, the Sri Lanka area. And then you're really laser focused. And that's what we're trying to do with OKRs. We really try to um, uh, focus with, focus. with them and, and, and give a an, an hard challenge to the teams to solve. So this is how everything ties think... together from, from mission to vision to strategy to your OKRs. Hmm. Yep. So I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. So based on based on uh, what I have researched as well as what I have adopted uh, in in uh, OKR uh, applications, uh, what I found is that it's it's kind of uh, one of the critical aspects to focus, right? And focus to very few set of goals than many because we tend to we tend to say yes and yes and yes you know keep saying yes to many things that that are aspirational because we love to achieve more right but the problem with that is you know you might not have enough focus sufficient focus so i think what what you brought up there is really really uh, key uh, if you lose the focus you lose everything else because see if you have the wrong set of goals set Right, everything else that you do for for that given quarter would be based on that. Right, that's why this is critical. That's why we need to pay much more attention uh, than usual uh, to ensure that you know we set the right goals. And and I think we will come to that point. That's where we suggest the OKR cycle. It's not one-off thing. Right, you you should be coming back. Right, you should also adjust if 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 the situation becomes a situation where you have to adjust your OKR set, right? Because no. otherwise you are, you, are, you are trying, you are just keeping your OKRs, which are not relevant. You're doing something else. And this happens. This is very challenging to stick to few priorities in a given time horizon. Yeah. yeah. So great, I, I, want to, great. I want to go uh, one level yes. uh, um, deeper and saying that um, one of the lean concepts that are trying to apply to OKRs is the, the concept of uh, inventory is waste, right? So in lean we we consider inventory yep. a waste and when you're looking at okrs then mm. i see a lot of organizations that have like 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 tens of goals in their organization even on executive level and say like oh these are all the things that we need to do well that's okrs is about really about focus so if you can reduce that inventory of goals 
inventory of OKRs to just one. Hmm. Um, that hmm. will create extreme focus and that will help you with, you know, the, 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 the two X or 10 X, 10 X growth of your companies. Right. So you should really yeah. focus. The focus is, is so hard, but so important. If you can't focus, then probably they're not going to work. Uh, are you a big fan of value stream mapping or do you suggest any lean, lean tools uh, to be used in this effort in combination with OKR? Yeah, so value stream mapping is a great exercise to to see how your processes are are working. Yeah, you can use them on mm -hmm. a macro level, but also on a micro level. And I think they're great to um, understanding uh, bottlenecks, but they're also great to to discover uh, metrics for inside your key results. So mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I use uh, value stream mapping to discover some uh, some uh, leading or lagging metrics that you can use inside your inside your uh, inside your key results yeah so it's a great technique that uh, sometimes can be used and it's um and you can pretty much use it in in, in almost everywhere you see processes for example eh? um, when you look at the sales process uh they sometimes call it the funnel right but it is also a yeah. process you know so you need to identify yeah. your customers and then it goes through a funnel it's a process so you can apply value stream mapping technique on that uh, same with marketing um and, and other processes uh, but ideally, of course, you look holistically at the whole company and try to map the whole complete value stream um, in there. But there, it's, a great, it's a great technique to find uh, good key results. Thank you. Yeah. So I just wanted to see your stance. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a big fan of value stream mapping. In fact, I have done two interviews with one of the le uh, value stream lean consultants uh, who has written one of the very trending books called Value Stream Mapping, uh, Karen mm -hmm. Marty. I recently yep. interviewed her for for uh, the concept of uh, clarity first, right? So again, wh what we say here is the same, almost the same thing, right? Be yep. clear, create clarity before you jump in, right? So that's that's important, and I think you know the fact that you brought this concept in concept called uh, eliminating the waste is is coming at the top of everything everything we do, right? Because that's exactly the biggest problem is also, right? If you look at even a startup, right? Multiple departments are pulling into multiple directions, right? Because they don't collaborate. Uh, so I call it touch points, right? Uh, we haven't optimized mm -hmm. the touch points. We, we always, we focus on suboptimal improvements. Example, HR is good at what they are doing and they, what all what they do try to do is optimize the HR processes, right? Mm -hmm. Now they don't, they don't worry about what's happening outside. And if you don't, so they are missing the, the, the total value stream, right? They might optimize within HR, but they are not optimizing as a company, right? Because there will be a lot of waste in that transition as well. Yeah. 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 And, and that's why I love OKRs because OKRs, they, they go across um, departmental borders and because in essence, they're abstract constructs anyway, right? If you have a department and then you have a, maybe sub department or sometimes you companies use the Spotify model, they have like a tribe and then or mm. product areas. And these are all kind of abstract things anyway. Um, and with OKRs, you set OKRs across all these boundaries. So what you're trying to do is like, okay, look, look at what look at all the talent that we have and see if you can somehow self-organize around this goal and then create a team or a product team around that that will move the company forward. Um, and sometimes it means like, oh, we need to have, we need to include marketing, we need to include sales and, and or maybe other uh, uh, other people from these functions. So yeah, that's, um, that's, a, that's a good topic. And then, and then you try to optimize around the value stream. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Great, great, great uh, perspective. What are the top three traps that you have seen in goal setting? Yeah, this is a good question. There are a lot of lot of traps, <laughs> especially when it comes down to OKRs, right? So I think I think not necessary to goal setting, but I think necessary to to OKRs is that hmm. um, it's it's it is it's cultural. It is um, this gotcha. command and control organizational model that mm. is implemented and then and then you try to implement OKRs on top of it and what you see is symptoms like you know uh, uh, tying compensation to to the OKRs and bonuses to OKRs or we 
you know, <laughs> try to micromanage micromanage teams with OKRs or worse, we're going to buy uh, OKR software tools to so that we can control and to see where all the teams are working on. And 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 of course, yeah. that's 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 the wrong incentives, right? This is not why you want to use OKRs in the first place, and it's not a healthy environment to start using them. Uh, so that that I can I can unpack that if you want, um, but that that's by far I think the most um, uh, the, the 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 biggest uh, trap of all. Like we trying to okay. we tr yeah we try to uh, implement OKRs on an on an on an organizational culture that is not ready for it, and um, um, so one of the other traps will be I think um, that there's no baseline data at all in an organization. So uh, hmm. that's different than that's different when you have like a B two C company uh, where there's a lot of metrics, uh, Google Analytics, all this information is is widely available. But when it comes down to business to business organizations, um, it surprised me how how many of these organizations are not collecting enough data points to hmm. to uh, base their uh, to base their OKRs on. And so that's another other thing i think uh, most b2 b2b companies should really invest in defining good kpis or good metrics and that's always you know when i when i'm joining a company there's there was always kpis but most of them are, are are the wrong kpis so they should first do investigation and do discovery work about you know what is what are some good uh, metrics or kpis that we can track before they even start on the okr journey and then i think uh, another trap will be not implementing the OKR cycle that we talked about, right? So they set the OKR, they set and forget it, and the uh, team set an OKR, and at the end of the quarter, they find out that you know nothing moved, and well, the, the whole tool become useless basically, right? So it's not hmm. it's not giving them any benefits, so uh, only for ticking a box. So that is another trap that that I've seen uh, a lot, particularly APAC, uh, Asian culture, right? So there is a lot of bureaucracy. There is a lot of political nature in the organizations. And I mean, when it's worst, nothing works. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> when when the organization politically is politically driven, no management methodology will work. So that's that's my observation, right? So don't claim that you are trying to transform yourself if you are not ready to fix your basics. Yeah, exactly. So one of yeah. one of one of the big problems is that it's basically the culture. You're right. You won't believe, uh, uh, but you know, I I have one of my coaches uh, uh, who joined, uh, who left a big company, joined another big company, and uh, he got a step progression, and he never realized what is what was he going into, right? And uh, he thought it's better off, uh, of course, in terms of the package, the step progression, but the culture is not helping him, right? No. Uh, he, you know, he's not even been able to do what he was doing as a project manager, as a senior project manager here, right? It's just a title. And when he tries to go and uh, talk to the management, his, his line manager, I mean, line manager says, don't talk about it, right? So we, we just do what you are supposed to, what you have been asked to do. I mean, in a culture like that, I mean, not nothing works, yeah? So as, as managers, leaders, I think we have a, bigger responsibility to fix the basics, fix the foundational problems before we think of any of these things. Right? These yeah. things will help if you have your basics fixed. Exactly, yeah. And I think it's not only EPAC. I think it's also in Europe. We see the same problems. People hiding, right. hiding behind uh, bureaucracy and roles. And, um, and, um, and there's nothing wrong with that as long as the organization is still, you know, moving forward. Can move. and yeah. Yeah, that, and and and, and it works for and it works for them. Um, that's fine, but they probably don't need you. They don't need OKRs, right? They they probably are better off just defining a good set of uh, KPIs or metrics, and then they move on. So there's nothing wrong with that. However, if the organization really want to, you know, be more innovative and make sure that they make big big step changes, then they should think maybe about embracing a tool such as OKRs. Um, and there's an interesting um, uh, idea that um, that I that I that uh, that many organizations use is that they understand they hmm. leaders they really they realize that you know uh, without a current organizational culture it's really it's not going to work so they understand that they 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 um, they agree on that 
But what they what and what you see often is that they starting to use OKRs to create this organizational change, to create this hmm. culture change. Because implementing hmm. OKRs is uh, is a big challenge. Uh, I don't I, I don't need to to lie to you. So it's 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 really difficult to get it right. Yeah. Um, but once you have the, the foundations in place, you have the OKR cycle in place, and you have basically the operating system for change in your organization, then you can maybe start thinking about, okay, maybe we should first do internal changes. And many organizations, especially larger, larger ones, they will focus on um, increasing operational excellence first for a couple of quarters mm. before, before mm. they move on to the more you know commercial and, and customer specific OKRs. So OKRs can also help to 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 get out of this uh, bureau, bureau, uh, bureaucracy and um, and move on to uh, uh, maybe even a product-led company or something like that. And so OKRs mm -hmm. can also um, create internal change. And I think I think uh, it's interesting for many leaders to think about that idea. Okay, once we have installed OKRs or we have installed the, the cycles and the rhythms, we can use OKRs mm -hmm. to, to to as a lever uh, strategically to change uh, the way how we currently operate and to change culture from the inside. And I think that the, that is uh, very interesting to play around with that concept. But the next question that I want to ask you is about the OKR anatomy. Uh, so if someone wants to write an effective OKR, what should be the structure to be followed? Yeah, there's not there's no such a thing as the perfect OKR, of course. Um, so I always say, like, you know, uh, perfect is the enemy of good. So mm -hmm. especially when, when you're going to start with OKRs, I think it's more important to just start with them and to practice. Yep. And and, la and later on, you will, you will make them more perfect. Um, I think when it comes down to to objectives, I think it's really important mm. to 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 say the thing that you want to achieve. So yep. um, by looking, for example, at existing KPIs. So if you look at um, customer satisfaction and you want to give that a bi big boost with your team, then saying like, okay, next time, next quarter, we uh, our customers love our product, right? So mm. that mm. that this that so that is tightly to get tightly. Uh, connected with this uh, with this KPI that you're already measuring, and then for the key results, um, there's a there's a special formula that you can use to be really specific. And uh, well, this formula is for beginners, eh? so it's just a template. So you always want to increase or decrease something, and um, so you want to uh, increase or decrease, uh, and then a statistic like the average or the total or amount or P99 percentile or something like that. So you always have a statistic. So you want to increase then the, per the statistic, then the actual thing that you want to measure is that apples, <laughs> pears, <laughs> uh, like subscriptions. <laughs> what is the thing mm -hmm. that yeah. call the thing that you want to measure? Um, mm. And um, then it's really important from X to Y and the X means the baseline. What is your current situation? Um, yep. yeah, what's your uh, current situation? And then the the why is your target. And for those that are you know, familiar with Lean and Lean Kata, you probably recognize, you know, uh, this this way of thinking. Um, but uh, so you should really have the baseline in place so that all the teams or uh, or that you as a company understand like here are we now, and then 90 mm -hmm. days from now we want to achieve um, this target. So that's the why. So again, so you want to increase or decrease something. Uh, the, then the statistic, uh, the total or the number, um, then the metrics itself, and then from X to Y. And I think if you if you use that construct, I think if you use that formula, then um, most of your key results will be okay. Um, and uh, again, they should be focused on the outcomes and not, not on the output that you want. Eh? So never count the amount of uh, features, for example, or something like that. Yeah, that that will be a waste. Yeah. Can you just tell me the top two tips that you can provide in terms of writing writing the OKRs effectively? Yeah, I think one thing is to understand really the result that you want to achieve, uh, the outcome you want to achieve. And, yeah. um, and you can think of it as um, a change in human behavior, either externally or internally. Like, 
it's great that you develop a feature for somebody, mm. but what would you like somebody to do with that feature that you have developed? And I think that's really important. Um, and that's of course for customers. Uh, what's um, what's the what's what's that uh, feature going to do for your customers? And it, it also implies internally, right? So you all maybe have an internal team, maybe a platform team. You also have an internal customer. So you could also think about what what are we going to change in behavior in that internal customer, right? So um, hmm. Hmm. Um, and for example, uh, I send out an email campaign. That's not a key result, right? but if you want, if you say like, well, we're going to send out an email campaign and we count the number of clicks, that's maybe also not relevant, but we, we count the number of open emails and the number of clicks uh, that people do, right? That's a change in behavior. They need to open up the email, they need to click on the link, and that's something that we can start measuring. So thinking about that is, is one. And the other one would be um, everybody likes a challenge. Right, you see a lot of on social media. You see like ice bucket challenges. There's a lot of challenges. Like people love a hmm. challenge, and I think framing the objective as the challenge you would like to do or to solve with the team for the next 90 yeah. days or the next quarter uh, really put things in perspective. So I think um, if you if you can maybe uh, I'll also do, do a thought experiment with people. Like maybe you can close your eyes and think about you step in into a time uh, a time machine and 90 days from now you step out. Then you look around and what do you observe? Hmm. What is different, right? And can you maybe describe that? Hmm. And that will probably be your OKR. So I think that is um, that, that is a trick that I do a lot of with teams and that really helps. So, and um, uh, but again, it requires That's practice. Nice. Um, it's, it's not easy, right? So I explained it easy. It, it requires hmm. a lot of uh, patience and practice. So certification, you know, I, I have my opinion about certification, but I think it... And it helps with having a good foundation, but then you need to put in the hours to practice, 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 yeah. practice over again until you get it right. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is one of the very important questions that, that we already spoke about, the, the OKR cycle. Now, moving towards uh, the topic OKR cycle, what what specific cadences do you, do you recommend uh, in the total OKR cycle? Yeah, so the total the total cycle by default is 90 days. And I always start with that because if you think about it, it makes sense, right? If you want to focus on outcomes, if you want to change behavior, um, if you mm. want to change anything radical, um, mm. 90 days is, is already really limited time to do a really big step change, right? So if you, if you think mm. you can do it shorter, then probably it's not a big change or uh, will okay. not have any significance. Uh, any significant results. So 90 days for me is the is the is is, is the minimum I would say um, uh, to start with. And so maybe you need to adjust it to your uh, to your company. Um, some uh, some companies they use it quarterly. Some of them use it uh, every uh, trimester. Yeah? So hmm. um, or even half a year. I think uh, that that would be that, that would be good. And then it starts always with this, you know. We're going to plan and set the OKRs. Then we're going to align them with between teams. If you have more more than one team in your organization, you're going to align between teams. Then you're mm. going to the um, in the cycle cycle of having uh, a weekly cadence of OKR check-ins, and then at the end you do a retrospective to see how you can improve on the process or where you learn and where you're going to set new OKRs. And especially the 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 weekly check-ins had to, to have this rhythm. The having mm. the cadence is, is 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 key to the success of OKRs. So if you don't have weekly OKR check-ins, it's probably not going to work for your organization. You really need to check in on a regular basis with the whole team to understand like what kind of things can we now discover, what things can we now deliver, try error, do experiments to see how you can move the needle. In the the framework that I mentioned to you, EOS Entrepreneurial Operating System which is based out of the book called Traction, uh, seems to be really, really working. This is what we, we, we typically adopted in our uh, organization, my current uh, company. Uh, it works, as you, as you rightly mentioned, uh, but, uh, you know, that, that framework, that uh, methodology also recommend that uh, you should start focusing on your next 90 days. Right. And, and personally, right. So I, I had ex done this experiment personally as well. 
uh, whenever I want to achieve anything significant, which contributes towards my value proposition, my revenue, wealth, right, my my competency, I think three months is a good good time horizon. Uh, it, it's long enough for you to achieve something, short enough for you to focus. I think that's exactly. that's why it yeah. is working. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, th I think. It, from there, from if you, there if you, if you, sorry, sorry uh, if, if you ever tried quit smoking, for example, um, you know it's really hard and difficult mm -hmm. to do, right? Or if you want to go to the gym more yeah. often, it, it, it's you know, it's it's already really difficult to do that yourself. Um, it's it's mm. even ha even harder when you want to do that with a whole team or you know whole customer segment, right? So um, yeah, that's why at least you need Correct. ninety days. Yeah. Correct. Correct. So from there, but what, what you recommended uh, was uh, you're going to have a weekly check-in. Uh, can you just brief what exactly you would do in a weekly check-in? Yeah, the check-in is yeah. a short meeting, just short meeting, Monday morning, 8 o'clock, um, hmm. <laughs> preferably, right? So you do it at the beginning of the week before you have all, the, okay. all your other <laughs> things, before the week starts, right? And then hmm. you look at, you, you're looking at your OKRs, you're looking at your key results, and you might want to hmm. give it a confidence score, like, oh, how comfortable are we that we, you know, moving the mm. needle this week or, you know, uh, the coming weeks. Mm. And then you're going to look at uh, maybe some of your obstacles, like what's what's preventing us from moving the needle this week. And then you can come up with some mm. kind of experiments, uh, like how we can remove these obstacles that you face. Um, and sometimes the obstacles are really hard. Right. Sometimes the obstacles are really uh, obvious, maybe. Yeah, so it really depends on on how you look at that. Um, yeah, so, and, and and that's something, and then you also want to pay attention to your health metrics. Uh, you, uh, you also, while you're going for this really hard goal, right? So if you want to run a marathon, yep. to use yep. that metaphor again, um, um, you also will need to pay attention to your heart rate and to your hydration while you're going for this bigger goal, right? So it's hmm. really important as a team also to understand and to keep monitoring your business as usual. Um, and, 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 and then you, Basically, you have a couple of uh, experiments or things you want to try out that that week, and then and, and you repeat that every week. You're going to repeat it. You know what's the OKR, what are the key results, what's your confidence level, what's blocking us, what are you, what are the obstacles, and how and how what kind of experiments can we run this week to to hmm. either explore the, more about the problem or uh, to move the needle of the key results. Excellent, love it. Yeah. So it's, it's basically, again, going back to agile mindset and the approach where we want to kind of revive the things quite often, right? So it's that That's basically the feedback loop being enabled. Yeah. Is that you want to have yeah. yeah, you want to have feedback as, as soon as possible, right? You, you, you can't afford to, to wait until, you know, um, it always Three frustrates months. me. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 exactly. It always frustrates me that teams working on maybe a feature and they're working on it, working on it, and maybe after after one quarter or even half a year uh, <laughs> going dark, they they will yeah. launch a feature and guess what? It doesn't yeah. work, right? So yeah that's, work. That's, yeah, that's a waste. And again, coming back to lean, we want to avoid waste. And one of these wastes is you know uh, building features that nobody wants. One of the problems that we have in the traditional goal setting frameworks, uh, I think it's not a problem with the framework itself. It's the problem with the cadences because most of these frameworks don't, don't recommend any clear cycle, right? Example, smart goals. I have yep. been in a big organization, I mean, in big organizations where smart goals were used. I mean, nothing wrong. When you look at it, you get some no. level of clarity, right? But the problem yep. there was we never repeat. Yeah, we never review. We never go back and ask the question: Are we are we really focusing on the uh, goals, objectives? Right? We don't do that. So, uh, my question is around that. Uh, but uh, how how to review OKRs effectively? Any best practices or any 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 practices that you recommend? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, and I think it's a, a great example. I think if you compare OKRs to the other goal setting methodologies, I think the difference is the cadence, right? Is the is the cycle that you have and the, and the weekly rhythms towards these goals. I, I I argue that with smart goals you can achieve the same thing. By the way, but they're you know outdated, <laughs> outdated anyway. But um. Uh, to review OKRs is is uh, I think you I think I think yeah I th I think um, I think you should review OKRs on a weekly basis 
and you can use confidence scores mm. to, to to get you know because OKRs yeah. is really about hard data and getting this hard data, but you, you also need to you know give some more uh, soul or have some qualitative data as well to OKR. So what's your confidence? What's your feeling saying about you know the goal? You know you can have it hard on Progress. paper. What's 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 your feeling saying? What's the team feeling about you know mm. your gut feel that, that if it's achievable or not? So you want to couch mm. this on an, on a continuous basis. So then, of course, on a continuous basis, every week you're going to do this. So you get already regular feedback. You're regularly reviewing the progress on your OKRs, um, and then at the end of the at the end of the cycle, um, the, mm. there are some teams, by the way, that do this mid quarter or mid mid cycle as well um, to do a, a regular agile retrospective, right? To do a review, mm. the looking back at the OKRs, and the looking back like okay. What are the things that we can learn from this? Some of the OKRs, we didn't move the needle. Why is that? Right? Having, a, having a healthy conversation about that topic. Or maybe we mm. uh, achieved the key results, but it was too easy, right? And, and maybe you want to have a conversation about that as well with the team. Like, why was it too easy? Um, because what we try with OKRs is that we try to set a stretch goal, right? Something that is not easy mm. to achieve. So we don't expect mm. teams to achieve uh, 100% of their OKR. Um, and then you also want to reflect back on the process itself because, you know, you, you're going to install this default cycle, mm. uh, but maybe that cycle doesn't uh, fit in your organization or maybe you need to change some, some of the events or maybe um, maybe you need to reduce the amount of events that you have. So you constantly, as a team, as a company, you need to reflect back at how can we both improve OKRs themselves and how can we improve the process so that it fits to in our culture, in our uh, way of uh, working. And uh, because sometimes you can decide, oh, uh, 90 days doesn't work for us. Maybe you need to go to 120 days for us to be more effective. Mm. And, um, and and that's something that you need to uh, critically reflect every 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 week. So you, you, run, a retro, you run a retrospective at the end. Um, so you do both. So weekly check-ins, weekly reviews, uh, to monitor progress, and at the end, you have the retrospective. At the end of the ninety days. At the end of the ninety days, yeah. And some teams, some teams use uh, say like we can't wait that long, uh, and they also do it mid quarter. So after forty five days, they do also a retrospective. Um, yeah. So, but that yep. depends on yep. on the team. Yeah. Sounds great. Sounds great. Yeah. So I think you know what you explain is exact what exactly we follow. Uh, at this point also, right, we do, a, we do a planning every quarter, the first week, right, in the first few days, and then we, we put down our team level OKRs and then, uh, you know, move on. Uh, at the end of the, the, the quarter, 90 days, we, we do the retrospection and the planning for the upcoming quarter, yep. right, uh, which works. And, and uh, the weekly review, uh, so anyone interested what EOS talks about. EOS also has a weekly meeting about management review where we actually review the the, the drafts which are equivalent of OKRs uh, weekly mm -hmm. basis, right? So the leadership team, uh, the team leads basically get together in that meeting and then go through the review. Uh, so that, that allows us to be aligned with what we want to do, any adjustments, all that can happen. Yep. Yeah, I think I think uh, a, a lot of management books they they say the same thing, right? What you need is to have to have a regular rhythm installed with your teams, with the leadership teams, and have it on a regular basis. Um, I think that is one of the key things to regularly align with each other um, to see how things are going. Um, yeah, uh, I'm a big fan of having weekly meetings. Um, uh, the moment I think when people say, well. Why not? We, why should we uh, sh should we not do biweekly meetings? Then alarm bells should ring. Like, oh, it, it, yes, you're yes, trying to yes. hide, right? So you hide something, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or okay, there's nothing okay. to nothing to align about. Or yeah, I think it's really key to have these weekly meetings. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so only if uh, those, only if it's like ten minutes. Yeah. Correct. Those who are really resisting probably have certain things to hide. That's my observation as well. <laughs> yeah, probably. probably. <laughs> This is about one of the one of the uh, problems most of the organizations go through. We talk about goal cascading, right? Uh, but the problem that I have seen in cascading is it takes a lot of time. <laughs> so I have yeah. spent the first quarter 
defining the goals. Now think of the cascading part, right? Uh, in in this organization I worked, like you know, many years ago, several years ago, we pretty much the you know it comes from the chairman to the board of directors to the you know the the site heads in multiple countries, then site heads to the VPs of uh, different functions, then VPs to AVPs, AVPs to managers, etc. Right. So it takes three months just to define the goals for those teams, and from there we start cascading. And uh, we talk about annual performance. And by the time individuals hear about that, it, it's already gone. Like in half the year is gone. <laughs> yeah. Right. Now my question is around that. Now I, I, you know, my my stance is that probably we need to change that approach. Uh, What's what is your recommendation in terms of getting that time shorter so that you have the OKRs ready, right? Yep. As soon as possible for the teams to go and chase them. So it really depends, of course, on, on your company size. Uh, but let's say that you have a company size of maybe between 200, 500 people, or even 2,000 people. You need to do this in, in, in less than one week. You need to do mm -hmm. everything. You need to have goals on company level and you need to have goals on team level. Mm -hmm. So um, if you cannot do that in one week, um, I think you need to uh, criti critically look at uh, why that is not happening. And mm -hmm. it's only one quarter. So every quarter, you you what I call OKR week. There's uh, So um, every, every, every quarter, the whole organizations need to spend on OKR week. And mm. there's some even there's some organizations that can do that in one, two days. It's, it's it's amazing. If you if you can structure it and if you if you build out the habit and you have the skill set to do proper OKR setting, um it doesn't need to take that long. So so I, I, I think even if you can do it in one day or two days, that would be amazing if you can do that. Instead of spending weeks and weeks about, you know, sandbagging and, oh, we need to do an OKR. Sending mm. OKR should be intense, but a lot of fun. And you will have mm. critical discussions for sure. Mm. Uh, but it needs to be, you know, uh, fast. And um, I mentioned cascading OKRs in my book as well. Uh, but then I quickly correct myself like it's not about cascading it's not you know uh, doing it from the top down to to all the trenches in your organization so okay yeah. ours is a top down and bottom up approach which means that That's it's scary. good for yeah it's good for leadership to to give a strategic direction like this is the this is yeah. the direction that we want the strategic context or the strategic intent that that we uh, sometimes call them but then it's really uh, the, uh, the role of the leadership teams to sit together with the teams to give them guidance and direction on 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 where we want to be with the, with the team, and that the teams will come up with a ways on how to measure it. Uh, they they uh, need to challenge themselves on on their ambition level, and together it should be a collaborative process with the leader and the team together to come up with a good OKR for the next quarter. And um, um, and sometimes if, if you're really mature and, and, and true product teams, they can set it them for themselves because uh, maybe uh, they already understand like the bigger picture. And um, and sometimes even some of the key results or some of the OKRs from the teams is so important to the organization because maybe a team mm -hmm. discovered something like, oh, if you really focus the organization on this thing, then it will can provide a big 10x boost to the rest of the organization. Then even sometimes the OKR that's created on, an, on a team level can be elevated to a company level OKR. And I think that's the that, that could be really powerful. Um, or that is really powerful if, if you can do this. And um, so it's, it's, it's not a top-down uh, approach. It's not cascading. So it's top-down, bottom-up approach and, and sideways. So it's, it's, uh, I would That's like good. to put the, the company level OKR even in the middle and then all the teams around um, what I call OKR swarming. They swarm around the company level OKR and they try to influence it uh, as much as possible. And this goes beyond, you know, um, the the... the organizational structure that we have in place beyond you know departments and business units and forget about these things okrs is about uh, lean okrs in particular is about forgetting all these these boundaries and only focusing on the problem that we want to solve super yeah thank you very much for those great insights uh but 
Yeah, so I think uh, we got to wrap up the discussion. I don't want to take any further time, but I have my final question for you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, so uh, the question is just looking at the whole OKR, the term OKR, uh, adoption perspective, anything, right? What's your single single message? If anyone interested listen to you, what is that message that you can give as the single message about OKRs? Keep it lightweight and simple. Don't trap into this fall of making it so complex um, that that it will become the next management fat, right? Hmm. That will be my number one thing, you know. And 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 that's why I call my book Lean OKRs. Moving the needle with Lean OKRs, you need to have a like lightweight process, lightweight goal setting methodology that actually brings business results without you know implementing OKRs for the sake of implementing OKRs or to tick a box so you can move on. Um, unfortunately, I see a lot of teams that you know. Um, see OKRs as, you know, oh, there's something that we need to do. It's the same as, you know, time management, keeping, keeping, uh, uh, filling in your timesheets, you know, OKR should be really fun to work on, you know? Um, yeah. So that would be my main message. Keep them simple. Keep them si simple, stupid. <laughs> Kiss principle. <laughs> <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So love it. But yeah. So with that, let's, let's wrap up the discussion. Yeah. So as, as, uh, we discussed uh, the topic for the day was uh, objectives and key results, which is quite trending uh, management methodology used by a lot of corporates, scale ups, and startups. And probably, you know, if you are not uh, still using OKRs, probably this is the right time. Uh, it, it has a lot of benefits. Uh, that's that's something that that I have noticed. So, uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to Bart uh, from uh, Netherlands. And if you do have any questions, or if you are in APAC, reach out to me. Uh, so I kind of started uh, experimenting this thing uh, one and a half years ago. And I got to know it three years ago. And then, you know, I, I see major benefits around it personally, as well as professionally, right? If you are a manager, if you are a change agent, if you are a leader who is trying to transform the way your people, your organization work, probably this is a good start because... All what it demands is clarity. All what it try to provide you is also clarity. Yeah. And through that clarity, we are trying to create alignment. We are trying to be focused on what really matters to us. Right. Then it's all about being accountable, being aligning, uh, and then going for it. Right. So let's try that. Good luck. And uh, Bart, thank you very much. For your time it's really really appreciative uh, the time you spent uh, with us talking about your great insights hard earned insights i would say right definitely tacit knowledge that that you won't see anywhere else yeah thank you thank you for uh, generosity thank you for your time here and yeah with that with that let's call it a day my pleasure thanks for having me and if I can block my book, <laughs> it's you go to lean OKRs. Or sorry, you go yeah. to uh, um, moving the needle slash book, and then you can if you if, if you subscribe, then you can also get a, a discount code when uh, when the book is out. Super. Yeah. So we will put the link uh, on the live feed, right? So when you if you are someone who is going through uh, offline, you know, after the live show. Uh, you will still see that comment in the comments. We will put that uh, in the comment segment. Uh, watch for that. Uh, it will be on LinkedIn as well as on Facebook. Uh, if you want to learn uh, more about Lean OKRs, get that book in your hand. I'm sure it's going to give you a bit of wisdom for you to drive your next change transformation, your next initiative in your organization. Yeah. With that hope. Let's call it a day. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. Uh, we'll see you soon. Until we see you again, take care. Stay safe. Thank you, Bart. Bye. See you. Cheers. Bye.